SMT Nation, we back. Nation, we got big updates out of AT&T. We're going to cover it here in this video, looking at their next level standalone 5G progress. Let's see what they're doing with the network. Let's see if this is as big as I think it is. Link for the article from the AT&T website will be in the description. Also in the description is the real SMT Buy Me A Coffee link. A great way to support your creators. Link in the description. Also in the description is the Mint Mobile partner link. Our partner Mint Mobile offers great deals on wireless service folks and they just increased the data on all their plans with no additional cost. Check them out, use our partner link, you'll save money and you'll be helping out the channel in the process. All right, so taking 5G to the next level with standalone 5G from AT&T, what are they doing here? Okay, uh, looking at the introduction of it, uh, you know, for the most part, it kind of starts in a, in a progression. 5G NSA or non-standalone means that this version of 5G actually runs on an LTE core, relying on LTE connections to also anchor parts of the network connection. 5G SA or 5G standalone involves a standalone 5G network core uh, that does not rely or utilize LTE for the core of its operations. All right, with that being said, the progression is that we're going to go from NSA connectivity to SA connectivity. It's going to be uh, you know, a gradual sequential process that occurs over the next couple of years. And it looks like AT&T has applied SA 5G technologies to create a new type of uplink connectivity or configuration, and it's going to improve and meet, and I guess the improvement is going to help meet the demands and the needs of the customers. All right, the, the technology itself is the first 5G SA uplink to carrier aggregation data call in the US. Now carrier aggregation basically means you're combining multiple channels, you're aggregating or combining uh, multiple bands together to create additional capacity, right? So if you have a single channel, the capacity is limited to the capacity of that one channel. If you have a second carrier or second channel that you can aggregate or combine, you get the additional bandwidth on top of the other carrier or the other channel. So you get the bandwidth of two channels working together. What that does is it creates more capacity. All right, so this means, you know, greater uplink capacity, which is the hard thing to do in networking, right? Downlink speeds are crazy fast these days. We see millimeter wave doing four gigs per second down. We see midband doing up to two megabit, two gigabits per second down. The hard part's always the uplink, right? So now that you're creating a second lane, adding more lanes of network traffic on the highway, it allows you to create more capacity. All right, let's look at the technicals. Uh, it says here that they use the Nokia 5G Air Score, Airscale portfolio, a MediaTek processor, uh, or, or modem, I suppose. Uh, they used low band N5. Uh, I, I don't know how much the bandwidth was on the N5, All right, but it's low band, so probably not much. Maybe 10 or 20 megahertz or something. And then they used C band, N77. And they did so at a, what does it say here? Uh, 40 megahertz of bandwidth in one configuration and 100 megahertz of bandwidth in another configuration. Uh, when they used the 40 megahertz of N77, they were able to increase uplink by 100%. So let's say they were seeing uplink of like 20 megabits per second uplink. They increased it to 40, right? So they doubled it. Uh, the configuration that has the 100 megahertz of N77, that increased the uplink capacity by 250% which is huge. That's a massive gain. Okay, so really good. Uh, they, they they were improving the speeds enough, I would say, to kind of make this worth mentioning here. So uh, they're doing a two-layer uplink MIMO on TDD. Uh, so a little bit for the, the technical folks out there that, that are in the networking space kind of know what that's about. Uh, they've been working on 5G SA4 component carrier downlink uh, with two FDD carriers and two TDD carriers that utilizing both parts of the C-band and DOD, the N77 uh, channel. So that's for AT&T, they got two different frequencies that they combined for N77. The C-band's 3700 and the uh, DOD is 3450. Anyways, uh, 5G SA3 component carrier downlink feature. Uh, they're doing that on flagship devices on the 2020 AT&T devices. All right, so that's, that's good to know. And they've got 5G NR dual connectivity uh, where they're aggregating low and mid band with millimeter wave. Okay, and they're seeing uh, 
what are they saying here? 5.3 gigabits per second downlink and uh, uplink up to 670 megabits per second. Look forward to that in the high leverage situations, stadiums, arenas, places, you know, big cities where the density calls for it. Additionally, look forward to network slicing, uh, precision location, private networking, all these different things that they're going to be doing here in the future. But this is big. Uh, this is going to take the uplink to the next level, something that AT&T, in my opinion, and I should say my opinion, I should say in my experience in the Cleveland market, AT&T has the weakest uplink. Verizon often double or triple the capacity. T-Mobile very often double and triple the capacity. I can't wait to see this in the real world uh, and, and actually start connecting to these types of configs. What do you guys think of this update? Newsworthy? Are you excited about it? Yes or no? And tell me why. Comment down in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.